Wow, it's been a while since I filmed anything, and that's just because the summer has been really busy, and um, we've been doing lots of fun stuff like camping and traveling and going to friends' weddings. It's been a, it's been a great summer, but now that it's coming up on fall, it's time to really get going on the garden construction. So that's what I'm working on today. I've already built two beds, but I have eight planned, so I've got six more to go. So let's get on it. I'm building them out of one by six cedar. And the only reason I ended up doing raised beds instead of just um, planting into the ground is because here we're sitting on really heavy clay and it's quite compacted from being a lawn. And I had access to really cheap cedar. I got about 200 of these four foot long one by six cedar boards for $50 off of Facebook Marketplace. So I couldn't really just say no to that. <laughs> and then all the corner posts are just salvaged bit of wood I found laying around the property or in my garage. So this project is ending up being very cheap. I don't think I would do raised beds right now with the price of lumber if I had to buy the materials. So yeah, I've got my tape measure laid out. I have two beds already in the place I think I want them. Um, so two more are gonna go on this side and then four more on this side, but I can't put those in until the gravel is gone. So that's a later project for now. I'm just focusing on the ones on the grass section. And there you go, bed number three is done. It's far from perfect, none of them are gonna be perfect, but that's not really a priority, it's just a place to contain the soil. So, looks good to me. It's funny though, I went out for two seconds and came back and Sully started to gnaw on this piece of wood, so 
Um, that's why it's a little ripped up. <laughs> Sully decided to have a snack. So that's all I can build for now because I've run out of pieces of wood to make the corners. So I'm going to have to find some more 2x4s or 2x2s or something, something to be the corner pieces because that's all I can salvage for now. Uh, oops, so I definitely didn't mean to do that. Um, <laughs> good thing I have more of these pieces. There we go, all fixed, and in the end, Sully did get his stick that he wanted. What do you think, Sully? Are you happy that you got the stick? That was just a clever ploy to make it break so that you could have it at the end, wasn't it? Building these beds ended up becoming a bit of an urgent project because I ordered my seed garlic and then realized that I didn't actually have anywhere to plant the seed garlic and I had to get a move on building some sort of garden beds. Um, other stuff that's going on is I finally put my name down on a wood chip delivery list. It's, it's not chip drop, it's another one that's local. So hopefully we get some wood chips soon here and I can actually get going on sheet mulching the front yard because that needs to be done. The trees suffered quite a lot this summer with the heat without um, proper mulch around them. It was still just like a circle of soil around the tree and then grass and then I can get the companion plants in around them too because I've been avoiding that until mulching. But in the meantime I should probably put this gravel back up on Facebook Marketplace because as you can tell it's not all gone yet. We got busy, so I just had to take it down because I couldn't coordinate people coming to pick it up anymore. It was just becoming um, kind of a pain to organize. But now that everything has settled down a bit and we're back home most weekends, I can, I can put it back up and see if anybody else wants more gravel. I tried planting some stuff in this last bed as a bit of a fall garden. Um, I've never actually done a fall garden before. I usually just kind of stop at the end of the summer because I'm tired, but this year I figured I had space, so I tried. I put chicken wire on the top because the squirrels have been trying to dig up my seedlings, so I've got um, snow peas in along the back that germinated really well, and then you can see the little red leaves of some beets and some kale coming up in the middle. Yeah, my tomatoes are pretty much done though for the season. There's a few left ripening. I've topped them off to try to get them to ripen, but I might end up just having to pick them and take them inside. It's getting too cold at night for them. Um, the days are still really hot, but the nights are getting pretty cold. Here's the last of the tomatoes. They're looking pretty sad. And if I could only plant one flower for the rest of my life, I think it would be brocade marigolds. Because look how amazing these are. Also on the list this fall, I need to get this rose into the ground because I don't think it wants to do another year in a pot. But it's quite gorgeous. And a second rose that needs to get planted in the ground this fall. Two of the roses I rescued didn't make it, the ones I rescued from work. And there's one last thing I need to show you. These are the mystery squash that I got from my friend Frances out of her compost bin. And they turned out to be yellow pumpkins, and look how big they are! There's my hand. They're getting quite heavy, and the vine is starting to die back, but the stems haven't started drying out yet, so I'm gonna wait a little bit longer. Some of them didn't get great pollination. I definitely didn't do the greatest job hand pollinating. This one is sort of rotting, so I need to cut that off, get rid of it. But overall, that's pretty cool. I've never grown pumpkins before. 
I also planted some out in the meadow area by the street, and they've done surprisingly well for not getting watered at all. There, you can see how big they are. And aside from the pumpkin, can we just have a moment for these dahlias? Wow. This variety is Penhill Watermelon. And now that the hot weather is past, it's a little bit cooler, my sweet peas are flowering again. And they smell absolutely amazing. The garden got a little bit trampled from the new windows getting installed because the scaffolding got set up there, but overall, it didn't get too badly damaged. That's a pretty decent harvest from some compost plants. They're not huge, but they're pretty nice. So in total, we got five pumpkins off of those compost plants from Francis, which is a pretty great harvest from something that grew by accident. Um, so I did some Googling and it looks like to cure pumpkins, you're supposed to wash all of the dirt off of them and then leave them somewhere warm and dry for a few weeks to harden up and cure. I mean, we might eat some of them before that, but I want to try curing them because I've never done that before. So I got the pumpkins all clean, all washed, um, and I'm just letting them dry out here for a while before I move them over to the side of my kitchen to sit and cure. So from what I understand, the whole purpose of curing your pumpkins is to let the flesh harden up and to let any of the um, scratches or imperfections heal over, like scab over and harden up so that your pumpkins can last through the winter. Yeah, I, I just googled that. That's new information to me because like I said, I've never grown pumpkins before. So this is all a big experiment. So we're going to have to see how it goes. If you have any tips for me on curing pumpkins, let me know in the comments because I've never done it before, so I would really appreciate any advice you have to give. So funny enough, I never had any interest in growing pumpkins until Frances gave me those seedlings out of her worm bin. Um, but now that I've grown pumpkins, it's it's a really satisfying crop to grow because they're just, it's a lot of mass of vegetable that you get out of one plant. So I will definitely be growing pumpkins again. Oh dear, that's that's dangerous. And when I walk through the fruit section, I just want all of it. After all that nursery excitement, I ended up just buying some seeds. I got some broad beans, some straight eight cucumbers, a really cool red sunflower variety, and some gold rush squash. It's a summer squash. Um, I think I'm going to try planting the fava beans over the winter this year, um, where you plant them in the fall and then overwinter them. I've heard you can do that in our climate, so I thought I might as well give it a shot. That's what happened. You go to the nursery to buy hedging plants, and you come home with a bunch of random seeds and no hedging plants. Also, the nights are getting cool now. It got down to eight degrees last night, so it's time to take this little guy, this citrus plant, don't know if it's a lemon or a lime, um, back inside. And right beside the citrus tree, I have my extremely disorganized seed station. I've got some uh, stalks, stalk seeds drying here. That was the stalks that I rescued from work that were getting thrown out, uh, and then in this, uh, cream cheese container. I've got 
sunflower seeds from my buttercream sunflowers. I've got, um, I saved some rose campion from my parents' garden. And then in here I have some sweet pea seeds that need to dry out a little bit still. And then some white bells. They're like blue bells, but white that came from a neighbor's garden. In this jar, what were these? Oh, this was also stock seed. That's what it looks like once it's out of the pods. They're so tiny. So I guess let's just uh, add these to the chaos. Hey, it's the next day. So I had planned on filling these up in this video, but it's already getting pretty long and the week is ending here pretty quickly. So I will see you next week for that project. Bye.